What's for dinner? Could that possibly be the most dreaded question any mom hears? It sure was mine. Welcome to the Harbor Breeze Home Podcast. I'm your host, Rita Joy. Come on over and join me in today's conversation about meal ideas for those of us who don't like to spend too much time in the kitchen. I always like to say that God has a sense of humor when it comes to me and the subject of cooking. You may or may not be shocked to hear that I actually don't like cooking much, but many of my careers over the years have involved cooking. My first real job was working at my small hometown's fast food restaurant. I learned to flip burgers, dice onions, dip cones, and make yummy hot fudge sundaes. To this day, that place still sells the best mushroom cheeseburgers I've ever tasted in my life. When the boys were little and I was trying to make a little extra money and get the kitchen tools I really wanted, I sold Pampered Chef at home parties. Do you remember those? I'd go to people's homes and demonstrate recipes being made with, of course, Pampered Chef's amazing stoneware and tools. I started out every cooking party by saying, I'm going to confess right away that I really don't like cooking. The ladies would all kind of gasp a little bit. And then I'd go on to say, but I find myself having to do it every day. So that's why it's important to me to use kitchen tools that get me in and out of the kitchen fast. (laughs) I sold quite a bit of pampered chef that way. (laughs) Then there was the two years I spent as the food services manager and head chef at a year-round camp and conference center, cooking full-time for 30 to 250 people at any given time. I still can't really believe I was able to do that job. I always said it was Jesus and me in the kitchen in those days, and it was only by his grace and his strength that I could pull it off. And side note, if you know of anyone who's a camp cook, give them an extra big hug. It's an extremely hard job and often very unappreciated. Most recently, I worked as a food photographer for food bloggers, and now I photograph recipes for my own blog. Phew, that's a lot of time in the kitchen for someone who doesn't like to cook. But the fact is, I can cook, and since we all need to eat, it has served me well in the career department. So today, I thought I would share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned through my various cooking stages of life that hopefully will help save you some stress in your cooking too. Stage one was learning to cook as a newlywed. My mom was horrified when she heard me tell someone that I really didn't know how to cook much when I got married. Didn't I teach you better than that? She asked. (laughs) We had a good laugh about that and then realized that although I'd watched her cook lots of times, I hadn't done much of it on my own. My sisters and I would make great batches of cookies on Sunday afternoons when my parents were napping, but other than fun baking recipes, I really didn't know many main course meal ideas other than homemade hamburger helper and sloppy joes. Someone told me with confidence that if I could read a cookbook, I could cook. So that's what I did. The first year we were married, I wasn't allowed by immigration to work here in Canada. You can refer back to that episode two for that story. So I spent a lot of time studying cookbooks, watching my mother-in-law's incredible kitchen skills, and perfected my once-a-month grocery shopping strategy. That's one of my big cooking tips. Plan a menu ahead of time. Figuring out what to cook is 90% of the battle when mealtime comes around. If you have a plan in place and you know what you're making, it saves so much stress. Having to constantly be thinking throughout the day about what you're going to cook in the evening can just about drive you crazy. Long before I was married, I overheard a woman say that she only grocery shopped once a month. I was intrigued by that idea and never forgot it. She said that the less times you entered a grocery store, the less money you'd spend on groceries. So I decided to try out that trick right away as a newlywed. It worked out perfectly since the best grocery stores were located about an hour's drive from where we lived. So we planned a once a month outing and got most of the groceries we needed for the whole month all at once. Then fresh produce and milk could be purchased throughout the month at our local grocery store as we needed it. 
this seems to be the perfect time to interrupt the story to tell you about a free resource to help you with menu planning. I have a free menu planning set designed with super fun colors that you can print on your home printer. It has weekly and monthly menu planners along with printable grocery lists. Click on the link in the show notes to get your set delivered right to your inbox. Okay, now on to the show. The next stage of cooking I like to refer to as the cooking for the kids stage. This is where I spent many years, obviously, as each of our boys joined our family and grew up until they left to head out on their own. As some of you may identify with, cooking for kids can sometimes be a challenge. I remember so vividly the struggle of trying to fix nutritious meals only to have them sit at the table with sad faces and that look that says, I don't want to eat this. (laughs) My husband was fiercely protective of my sensitivity to this situation, so he helped coach the kids very carefully that there were things that were not to be said at the table, like, gross, yuck, I don't like this. (laughs) We did also realize that one of our sons in particular really, really struggled with certain food sensitivities, and I just didn't know how to handle it. A nutritionist friend told us to try the one tablespoon trick for foods that kids don't like. In his case, it was most all vegetables. So we asked him to eat just one tablespoon, and then it was his choice if he had any more than that. She explained that once a child got the nutrition that they needed from a certain food, their little bodies would recognize they needed it, and then they'd be more willing to try it later. I discovered a genius recipe book written by Jerry Seinfeld's wife, Jessica, called Deceptively Delicious, Simple Secrets to Get Your Kids Eating Good Food. She explains in great detail how to puree vegetables and add them to recipes that taste absolutely delicious. It worked like a charm, and I still don't know if the boys realized that some of their favorite chocolate chip cookies had chickpeas in them. (laughs) I discovered during those busy cooking for kids years that my very favorite kind of cooking of all was cooking freezer meals ahead. My husband and I started doing it together, and in just a few hours of working together, we found we could get quite a few meals tucked into the freezer to be used throughout the month. Just knowing they were there saved me so much stress. I have a whole detailed post on my blog on how we did that, and I'll put it in the show notes. It includes full recipes of some of the kids' favorite meals, like the most amazing freeze ahead lasagna, taco soup that you can put in the crock pot to simmer all day, Hawaiian sausage that we serve over rice, and meatballs that are super yummy with mashed potatoes. I just can't end this stage of cooking without telling you a funny family story. One Sunday after church, we were invited over to a sweet couple's home for lunch. As a family with three young kids, we weren't invited to many people's homes, so this was a big occasion. As we drove over to their house in the van, we were coaching our kids as how to act at the table, you know, reminding them of their good manners and to be grateful. We were also a wee bit nervous, if I'm to be honest. Remember, I told you that one of our kids was a very picky eater. (laughs) Out of the corner of my eye, I was watching him through the whole meal. He was being such a good little trooper, and I noticed he was cleaning up his plate bite by bite. But the tiny mound of peas was left totally untouched. Finally, he looked up, pushed his plate just a little bit away from him, thanked the hostess so nicely, and then said, Oh, this food was so good, but I'm so full, I just can't eat another bite. (laughs) We thought that was quite clever, and none of us said anything about the mound of peas on his plate. (laughs) The next step in my cooking life was cooking at camp. Goodness, that was a wild ride. I didn't have much time to do much else in those days, but I did manage to get a few blog posts written. Quantity cooking was a whole new challenge for me, and I'm so grateful I had a chef mentor who helped teach me all the basics of organizing a commercial kitchen, creating menus for dozens or hundreds of people, ordering in all the food supplies, and training people to help. 
Most of my blog readers aren't interested in recipes that feed 50 or hundreds of people. But one of the most popular meals we served at the camp was meatloaf with smashed potatoes. I've written that on the blog in a normal family-sized quantity, so you can get that from the show notes too if you'd like to try it out. It really is a yummy recipe with a super fun, clever little trick. One of my biggest kitchen tips I learned during that stage of cooking was to always have a good quality knife that is sharp. I fell in love with chef's knives at that time, and now I can't live without them. I learned that a big, sharp knife is actually much safer than smaller, dull knives. And if you need to get a knife sharpened, you might want to check out your local community college to see if they have a course on knife sharpening. If they do, they might have apprentices that will sharpen your knives for a good price. I won't let anyone touch my knife to sharpen it unless they have training to do it properly. It makes a very, very big difference. Which brings me to the stage of cooking I'm in now. Cooking for two. Many of my Instagram followers have told me they're now in the cooking for two stage and struggling to figure out how to do that after they've cooked for a big family all their lives. Like me, many of them have been cooking for decades and are quite frankly tired of the whole thing. I totally get that. I've written some of my top cooking for two tips in an article on the blog that I'll link in the show notes. But since we're friends and I'm chatting with you today, I want to give you the -the up-to-the-minute update of how our kitchen process works these days. I've now entered that wonderful and sometimes wacky stage of life called menopause, and I'm trying to educate myself as much as I can to try to understand all the changes that are happening in my body. Like many of you, I've been experiencing symptoms like weight gain, fatigue, joint stiffness, and I really wanted to start trying to develop a healthy lifestyle and eating habits that would make me feel better. After trying out various programs and plans, I finally landed on one called Faster Way to Fat Loss. (laughs) The name of it always makes me giggle because I don't find it's necessarily fast at all. But I am very encouraged at how I'm feeling better overall and learning to exercise and eat healthier. I'm by no means an expert student, but I'm doing my best to learn how to give my body the nutrition it needs for this stage of life. I will put the link in the show notes for the Faster Way program if any of you want to check it out too. I know what it was like to be desperately looking for help and that's where I found it. It isn't a free program, but it does come with a coach to help you, along with an app that helps you track your macros and gives you daily exercise videos that I actually really love. So in the last few weeks, this is what we've done. I've purchased groceries once a week and spent a few hours one evening prepping lots of food for the week ahead, like blanching broccoli, roasting veggies, and cooking rice for sides, as well as making lunch things like tuna salad and baked chicken breasts. Having a head start on the prep helps me make better and healthier choices when mealtime comes around. Some of our new healthier recipes that honestly we've probably had once a week for a while now (laughs) are Big Mac burger bowls and sheet pan chicken and veggies. Also, baked rice has become one of our favorite things. Eventually, I'll try to expand into other recipes, but right now, keeping it simple is helping me stay sane and with the program. You can find those recipes on my blog. If you're looking for recipe ideas of any kind, you can always head over to the recipe index on my blog for all kinds of things. I've also created two e-cookbooks that are available for purchase. One is a comfort food cookbook that I wrote with a friend, and another one is a Christmas cookies cookbook. I'll link all of those things in the show notes for those of you who are interested. Well, thank you, sweet friend, for joining me for today's podcast episode. I'm looking forward to chatting with you next time already. Have fun cooking, have a beautiful day, and toodaloo!